by the grace of God, I was saved at the age of 12 at Bible camp. Um, the Lord revealed the truth of the gospel to me. I learned about sin and, and the penalty for that sin, and I found myself in a vulnerable position, uh, realizing that I couldn't save myself and that I needed a savior. Um, and by way of illustration, it was like um, the light, which is being filtered by clouds right now, but light coming through that window, uh, it was the Lord saying, trust me, I will be your savior. And over here is uh, my past before that moment, before I repented, and it was um, the darkness and my sin, my pride, and what I was living in. But when I got saved, I, I repented and I turned my back on that. And I heard God's call, and he was saying, trust me, fear not, trust me, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take care of you. And I wish I could stand up here and say that 31 years later, um, that I walked with him that whole time and I didn't experience any, any lapses walking back towards uh, my flesh and pride and sin over here. But um, I can't say that. There were many times when I was either looking toward him or sort of straddling the fence, one foot in, one foot out, or there were times when I was just swimming over here. And um, I grew up in church and I heard uh, hundreds of messages about the Old Testament. Like the nation of Israel, I was saved by the blood of the Lamb. Um, and I just remember hearing stories about the nation of Israel and just watching them turn their back on that light and that, that hand being extended saying, trust me. And in my, my own naive youth, I thought, those people were fools. How could they keep turning their back on God? He saved them. He parted the Red Sea. He brought them to this place that, they, that he promised them. And they murmured against him and they doubted him. And they actually turned back to this and wanted to go back to the sin of Egypt. It was a, a humbling experience when I realized that I, have, I am just like the nation of Israel, constantly turning my back on him um, and swimming in this uh, darkness over here. Um, but having some experience, and now that I can look back on what seems like a blur these past 43 years, I can see prime examples of when I was seeking him, when I was looking towards his outstretched arm and accepting the help that he was offering, him saying, trust me, um, I, I can see the blessings of that, and I can see the consequences of, of when I turned over here. Quick examples. I did not deserve to, to get into law school. My scores were not. Um, near even the, the median at the school where I was accepted. Uh, I shouldn't have gotten in. And uh, just one disclaimer, I don't take credit for any of the achievements that, that, that I've made. I can see now that it was all God opening these doors. But somehow I got in after doing pretty good in, in undergraduate. I had a, a great GPA, but my LSAT score was well below um, what it should have been to get into this school. Anyways, he opened that door and and I can see that at the time, but what I didn't see uh, when I started was uh, how I had gotten a little puffed up. Um, I had just done four years of undergraduate studies with a wife and three kids, and I was working full time and thinking, I got this. Law school, here I come. I'm going to crush this. Um, what I see now is that um, my wife, through all of that, was was looking toward the light and I'm thinking man I'm doing pretty good and I was riding on her blessing because she was faithful um, and I experienced blessing through that period but I got to law school and um, after the first semester I realized that it is a whole nother ball game I earned a sparkling GPA of 2.71 and after riding on a 4.0 for four years that was a huge hit to my pride so what I did is I didn't say Lord please help me. I want to trust in you. I said, man, I've really got to buckle down. I've got to, I've got to get that GPA up. I started spending less time with my family, more time in the library. I started missing services. And I remember now thinking back, I would give token appearances at church. I'd say, okay, I'm going to go make an appearance over here so they know that I'm still alive. And um, But I was going, even when I did go to church, it was with the wrong spirit. But I was at the library. And that second set of finals, I didn't take any chances. I got a hotel room down the street from the law school. For two weeks, I holed up in that hotel room and studied, 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 because I had to get that GPA back up. Um, and when those grades came in, I barely moved the needle. I couldn't do it on my own. So that summer, uh, I went to a men's retreat with, with my church, and the pastor was talking about priorities. And obviously, 
God is my first priority. My second priority is to my wife and then to my kids. And then my job and law school, my career, it's all way down here. I had everything backwards. So I, I got down on my knees that week on that mountain and I surrendered and I said, Lord, uh, my law school, my career, my family, my marriage, it's all yours. So I'm way over here. And I'm, I'm, I'm answering the call, um, accepting his help, um, answering the call to holiness. Um, he's calling all of us to holiness. So I, I said, I'm turning my back on all this stuff again. And I surrendered. And I said, this pride, this, this sin, uh, I'm turning my back on it. And Lord, I need you. And what I did was, um, like pastor, I made an appointment with God. I went to the library in the morning. And before I dug into those books, I put my Bible on the table in front of me and I gave him the first 15, 20 minutes of the day and I meditated on his word and I gave him that time and I'm focused on that light. And from, from that moment on, I didn't miss a single church service. I was there every time the doors were open. Um, I was spending time with my family that I had neglected and I was spending much less time in the library, but he gave me the skill to get through more in less time. And from that point on, I was in the top 10% of my class every semester after that. Um, so I made a decision to walk with God and he blessed me for it in a huge way. It was getting close to graduation. I needed, uh, I needed a job badly. I'd been borrowing money for undergrad and then law school and I was you know, w with a wife and kids. So I had to get a job and I decided um, I had done an internship with the Department of Homeland Security. I want to be an attorney with the Department of Homeland Security, and I decided that was it. Um, but those openings are few and far between, and about 2,000 people apply for one or two positions across the nation. So I thought, you know, what can I do to get that job? So here I am veering back over here again when it comes to career. Lord helped me with law school. I'm going to get the job over here. So I heard that if you have prior military service, you get put on the short list for this job. So instead of applying in a pool of 2,000 people, I'd be on a short list of about 20 people who are applying for this position. So I lost weight, I took the ASVAB, and I'm making this happen as I'm veering further over here, over here. I'm gonna join the, the, the National Guard. I'm gonna have that service. I'm gonna get this job that I want. I, 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 me, me, me. He uh, hit me in the face with a two by four, uh, an older guy at my church said, you know, you're, you're doing it all wrong. And he pointed me back to the outstretched hand of God saying, trust me. So I said, you know what? If I take that job with the guard, I'm going to miss, what is it, two weeks a year, one weekend a month. So those are times I'm not going to be teaching the Sunday school class that I've committed to. That's time away from my family. And here I am again. It's me trying to make this happen. So I said, you know what? I'm going to trust you that you're going to provide this job and I said, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to try to make this happen. And a day or two later, I got a call from my supervising attorney with the Department of Homeland Security and said, Bob, you're not going to believe this, but we just started this program called the STAR program, the Student to Attorney Recruitment Program. And what it does is people who have performed well on these internships, um, you get put on this short list when an opening comes up. So the Lord provided this he, he got me on the short list without me having to go through all of this. So it, it, as I look back, I can see clearly when I chose to keep my priorities right and make the decision to trust him, to follow him, that he is opening these doors.